So today we're looking at a few more ways to help you get the most out of every dollar. But before jumping in, don't forget to like and comment and also subscribe if you like these types of videos and you want to see more. So the first thing that you can do is research store specific money saving tips. I've created a lot of general money saving tip videos where I've recommended things like unsubscribing to retailer emails, removing saved credit card information, and even blocking certain retailers. But this is one tip that I'm pretty sure I've never mentioned before, which is kind of crazy considering that it's also something that I do quite often and it can save you money. So this is how it works. If you know you're headed to a certain store, before leaving, do a quick Google search and type how to save money at that particular store. So you might type how to save money at Home Goods or how to save money at Target, at which point you'll find articles upon articles on secret tips and hacks for that store. And to give you an example, and I haven't tried this myself, so I can't confirm whether it works, but I read that if you're planning to buy a big ticketed item from Target, what you can do is create a registry and then add that item to it. And what happens next is that after your event, Target will then send a 15% off coupon for unpurchased gifts on your registry. So you can then take that coupon and buy the big ticketed item. It might also help to stop watching shopping hauls. Now everyone is different. So some people can watch these videos and they have absolutely no effect on them. Whereas other people might want to buy every item on the list. So you have to be honest and determine where you fall and consider how certain types of content affect you because shopping haul videos, they can potentially impact our finances especially since clothing makes up a good percentage of these videos. And the reasons you have to be careful are obvious. You might be influenced to buy things that you really can't afford or things that you don't really need. And something interesting I heard a while back is that when some people create these types of videos, they don't always keep the merchandise. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't watch these, but again, it's really all about being honest with yourself and if necessary, finding an alternative, maybe watching decluttering videos or videos about minimalism. You should also clean up your credit. Now credit and frugal aren't terms that we commonly hear together, but there is a connection. On one hand, living frugal can help protect your credit because you're less likely to use a credit card or finance things that you can't afford, which protects your credit score. But on the flip side of this, having good credit can help you qualify for a better loan rate and you can also get lower insurance rates. A lot goes into improving credit, such as paying our bills on time and paying down our credit card debt. But at the same time, it also helps to have a strategy in place that's unique to your circumstances because what one person needs to do to improve their credit might be different from what you need to do. And as far as coming up with a plan that works for you, there's a unique tool called Score Master that might help. Based on your target score, it'll create a personalized plan to help you understand what's helping your credit score as well as what's hurting it. And you'll also learn about actions you can take to qualify for better rates. It also provides insight on the best times to apply for financing, and you can use ScoreMaster to resolve issues on your credit report, as well as protect your privacy by removing personal information from websites. And this isn't sponsored, but I feel it can be a useful tool for some people. So if you're interested, I will include a link below so you can check it out. It also helps to stop thinking that you deserve everything. Yes, we work hard, and if you've seen any of my previous videos, then you probably know that I do not believe in depriving oneself. I feel that that can backfire. So it is important to enjoy the occasional treat or splurge. But one mistake I feel some people make is thinking that they deserve everything. So they'll make statements like, I deserve these shoes, or I'm buying a new car because I deserve it, and so forth. And again, there's nothing wrong with enjoying your money, but some people will use that phrase as an excuse or as a way to justify overindulging, not realizing that that type of thinking could possibly keep them in a financial rut. If you spend too much money treating yourself, you might not have anything left to build a real emergency fund to invest or to pay off debt. It can also lead to impulse control problems, which means you're less likely to wait for sales or discounts and you're less likely to shop around. So you end up paying more for just about everything. Indulging is okay, but there is a right and a wrong way to splurge. So even though it doesn't have to be all or nothing, it should at least be balanced. 
You should also return items that you don't need or use. Many stores have pretty generous return policies and I encourage you to take full advantage of these. Now for unplanned purchases, I recommend using the 24 hour rule where basically you give yourself time to think about a purchase before making it. This works because once you leave a store and you get busy with other stuff, you might lose the desire to buy the item. But even with planned purchases, sometimes they don't live up to the hype. There have definitely been times when I've looked forward to buying something, maybe over several weeks or several months, and after finally getting the item, I realized pretty quickly that it didn't really meet my expectations, but quite often I would end up keeping it anyway. And there have been times when I've settled and I've bought items that I wasn't really that excited about, maybe because they were cheaper or maybe because I was just tired of shopping, I was ready to move on. But again, some of those items didn't live up to my expectations. And in both of these scenarios, I ended up being wasteful and spending more in the long run. So if possible, don't settle. If you're not crazy about an item, don't buy it. And if you buy something and later realize that you're not satisfied with it, return it and then put that money towards something that you do like. Also, don't be afraid to say no. When you get together with family and friends, I completely understand not always wanting to be in the house watching movies or playing games. Sometimes you wanna be out. And when you go out, sometimes it will involve spending money. But if you're not careful, you might get into a habit of saying yes to every invite, both big and small. It can be someone inviting you out to eat or to go on vacation or maybe to go shopping. And unfortunately, financial peer pressure does happen. So some friends or family might try and make you feel bad for not spending money. And if you don't know how to stand up to this, you could end up spending more just to prove that you're not cheap or boring. However, learning how to say no can be key to saving money because there is always going to be something to do, especially if you have a pretty big circle. So if you don't wanna do something or if you can't do something because you're looking at the bigger picture, it's okay to say no and to be honest about that, especially since you're the one who has to deal with the consequences of your financial decisions, not them. And finally, you can also be more frugal by getting enough sleep. Interestingly, research has found that there is a link between sleep deprivation and spending more. Basically, lack of sleep changes the way our brains process information, which can lead to poor decision making and affect our judgment, which isn't exactly new information. But what some people don't realize is that poor judgment can also affect how we manage and spend money. And this likely explains why some people will stay up all night gambling or why casinos will have late hours, free alcohol, or even flashing lights to keep people awake. So there are a couple of things you can do. Obviously, you want to get more rest, but at the same time, it also helps to be self-aware. So if you're feeling tired or groggy, put off the shopping trip until you feel better. So that's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing. I talk a lot about personal finance. So if you like videos like this, I do post every weekend and sometimes during the week. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in a few days.